So Lawrence Okola defeats Mikel Sislak via 12 round unanimous decision to retain his WBO Cruiserweight title in a very, very lackluster fight. It was a very boring fight from start to finish, in my opinion. Lawrence Okola does what Lawrence Okola does, you know. He lands a big shot here and there, but then there's so much grappling and smothering of his own work and so many clinches. It's just... You know, not interesting to watch at all. Lawrence Okola headlining these shows. You know, you can't be fighting like this. You know what I mean? You can't be fighting the way he fights. Like, he gets on the inside and the guy just d does not know what to do still. You know, from distance, yeah, he, he's a good fighter. He can land, you know, decent right hands from distance. You know, he's got a lot of power on them. But when he gets up close, there's just nothing there. From Lawrence Okola, just a lot of holding and grappling, and just it's just messy to watch. And Sislak himself, you know, he was holding himself and he was um hitting behind the head a lot with rabbit punches. That was bad. I'm surprised he didn't get a point taken away from him there because he was doing that excessively in that fight against Lawrence Okola. He was landing, you know, shots behind the back of the head a lot, and that's very dangerous. But again, Lawrence Okola, you know, I've never seen the guy in an entertaining fight, to be honest. His fights have either been blowouts or there have been performances like this where, you know, a lot of holding, a lot of grappling, a lot of wrestling on the inside. You know, it's just dull to watch because he's just got these long arms, you know. He's kind of like an octopus, you know. He just pulls guys in and guys can't really do much and they're frustrated. They can't really get to work because he's holding them and he's so physically strong for the weight as well. Lawrence and Coley, he's, what, six foot five. The guy could be a heavyweight tomorrow and fit like a glove in the division, you know what I mean, he's that big of a guy, but he retains his title, I think the final scores were 117, 110, 116, 111 and 115, 112, I personally scored it 117, 110, I felt that Lawrence O'Coley won the fight comfortably, I didn't feel like Sislak really landed anything really significant in the whole fight, he landed some decent shots here and there, but Lawrence O'Coley did drop him, I think it was in the fifth round, the fifth to the sixth round, he dropped him, with a shot, you know, just behind the ER, and it kind of took the equilibrium away from Mikel Sislak. But, you know, Lawrence Coley didn't really follow up with that in the next round, and the fight was just very pedestrian. It just went to 12 rounds, like, it got to the 10th round, and I was thinking, is this fight going to ever end? You know what I mean? It was one of them fights, you're just waiting for it to be finished. The writing was on the wall. I didn't think Sislak was going to pull a punch from the gods, you know what I mean, and land something devastating on Lawrence Coley because it's hard to do that when you're in there with a guy who's just grabbing and grappling and he's so long and gangly and ungainly. It's hard to really pin down Lawrence Coley and land, you know, the shots to put him away, you know what I mean? If Lawrence Coley's going to get beat, it's going to be by one big shot, in my opinion, because he's one of these guys, a bit like John A. Wilder, you know, when he gets hurt or hit, he just holds, you know what I mean, and just, He's so gangly and long. He's just there holding on to the opponent and the opponent can't work. But yeah, Lawrence Okola, you know, gets the victory. It is what it is at the end of the day. But again, not very exciting, very dull to watch. And fans online complain as always about Lawrence Okola because the fights are just not entertaining. He says he wants a unification next. Maris Breedis was in the building dressed like uh, Mario because of this thing with Jake Paul saying that he didn't know who Marius Bredis was and called him Mario. So, you know, it's just ridiculous by Marius Bredis. The guy's an well, a former unified champion at Cruiserweight. He's a current champion at Cruiserweight and he's doing stuff like this to try and get a fight with Jake Paul. You know what I mean? The guy should be looking to fight Lawrence Coley next. That's the fight that should be made. Lawrence Coley versus Marius Bredis. Marius Bredis is number one in a lot of people's eyes, even though people think he's a bit of an idiot and he's a bit of a joker. The guy has the best resume in the division, three-time cruiserweight champion, WBSS winner. You know, that's the fight to make, and he was in the building tonight. So, obviously, he's got his eye on the Lawrence Okoli fight if he doesn't get the fight with Jake Paul that he seems to really want, but he ain't going to get that fight. So, Lawrence Okoli is the fight to make for Maris Bredis. But it is embarrassing that a guy, you know, world champion, a guy who's an elite level fighter wants to fight somebody like Jake Paul over unifying his division but yeah it is what it is by Lawrence Okola hopefully we get to see him in a big fight next hopefully somebody you know tests him and you know actually goes in there and tries to put him away and tries to actually fight him and manages to get past the reach and all the holding and the clinching but yeah Lawrence Okola wins the fight quite comfortably so yeah comment below 
in the comment section, what do you guys think of this fight? Did you feel the same as me? Did you think it was a very boring dull fight? Comment below in the comment section. I'm out.